Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Heather Capret. I'm an instructional designer at Cleveland State University. Um, I'll be hosting and monitor monitoring the chat for questions for this session. Um, this is session three of OpenCon Cleveland 2022. The session is titled Library Content and Targeted Course Marketing. Um, so this session is being recorded and the link will be made available on the OpenCon Cleveland 2022 website. It's my pleasure to introduce Danny Dotson. He's an associate professor at The Ohio State University's University Libraries. He serves as a science subject slash liaison librarian for six academic departments. As an advocate of course materials affordability, he has long been promoting the course use of the library's ebooks and streaming videos. So with this, I'll hand it over to Danny. Okay, so uh, in this session, it's going to be uh, pretty interactive. I'm going to uh, provide you guys with a worksheet and we can if we can get that in chat. Uh, and there's also going to be a Padlet so that as you're finding things or discovering things, if you could please put that in the Padlet and I'm going to show you both of those at the beginning of this presentation. Um, and so a quick background is uh, I wanted to get instructors attention to the resources uh, and general options that I shared like hey you can search the ebook catalog or you could search for videos this way didn't really resonated so what I ended up doing was for uh, a lot of the undergrad courses in my departments I created some list of resources that align to those courses. And um, and I first did this using Excel, and then I did this through creating uh, course specific libguides. And I'm going to kind of go through how I got those resources uh, for those courses, and so and then marketed this more specific information. So uh, talking about tomatoes instead of produce, for example. So I'm I'm being a little bit more specific than uh, just talking about the generalities of the types of resources. So the worksheet, and I'm going to show you that in just a second, uh, you can do some hunting for course materials on yourself and please don't expect perfect results the first time. Uh, and I provided some uh, samples to help um, you along, but also uh, what you're supposed to do with this potentially is to get stuff for a course to provide samples to an instructor and say, hey, these are the types of things you might be able to use for this course. Uh, and then maybe that will start a conversation and maybe they will use the exact items you gave, but you never know. Uh, so there is a Padlet for this session and go.osu.edu slash OpenCon Padlet. Um, and that's going to take you to this Padlet. So uh, I'm going to be talking about most of these categories. I'm going to be talking about these categories throughout. Um, but I'm also providing you some examples uh, in case uh, you don't want to go and do some hunting. And that's going to be on the worksheet. So the worksheet uh, will start with an overview of walking through the process. And then it's going to go into uh, like the steps I take. So, uh, so for example, um, you can take this worksheet away. It's this first part is basically what we have already talked about to provide targeted content and whatnot. How you want to record the information you uh, gather from doing this is up to you. If you want to use Excel, if you want to use Word, if you want to use a LibGuide, it's up to you. Um, so I'm going to be jumping back and forth between um, PowerPoint and the spreadsheet, and I am going to uh, be giving you uh, several minutes to do certain steps. And then um, we will uh, come back together. And if somebody wants to um, ask a question, don't hesitate to put it in chat. But also, please, as you go along, put it in Padlet as well, uh, what you're discovering. Uh, so, uh, so the first step is you're going to find a course description or syllabus. You're not always going to be able to find a syllabus. And uh, so therefore, uh, you may just go to your registrar and find a basic course description. And in the worksheet, I have provided you with some sample course descriptions from Ohio State if you can't find anything on your own. So feel free to take on one of these courses. And I tried to get a little bit of arts, humanities, social sciences, and sciences, so you're not going to say, 
the science librarian gave us just science stuff. So these are some course descriptions. And when I did it, I just did it totally based upon course descriptions because trying to find syllabi for hundreds of courses all over the place potentially and many different versions uh, was overwhelming. So I tended to go with my project just for course descriptions, but you may have a way to get to very consistently to uh, syllabi. So please consider that as an option. So this first step, we're actually going to get into um, some hands-on activities right away. Uh, the first step is you're going to go and find a syllabus or a course description that interests you or use one of the ones here. And I'm gonna give you a few minutes to do that. And if you find something uh, at your institution, uh, please describe in the Padlet how you did it. Um, and while we are, uh, while you guys are doing that, I will kind of show how I went about doing it in um, another screen. But uh, please take the next five minutes and I'm gonna look at the time. Uh, so we will reconvene about uh, 2.12. And um, but please take the next five minutes to do a course description and then I'll walk through how I got to that. OK, in my case, uh, our institution has a feature called Buckeye Link, and that's where all sorts of information is and the course catalog part of that. But I could also probably have just Google course catalog Ohio State. And I'm able to find a course description for all the courses at Ohio State. And this isn't syllabi, it's just the basic course description for the institution. So I'm going to pick um, one of my subject areas. I'm going to go to computer science. And Ohio State has a lot of uh, courses. And uh, I know from my experience with this that uh, if I hit search, I'm going to get all sorts of uh, courses. And so this is the information I use to get the course. So each course description would have some basic information about the topics covered in the course. And so I'm just going to randomly scroll down uh, to 2121. And there's the course description that I would potentially use to uh, develop a uh, uh, a list of resources for the course. And then those are gonna be the next steps I go from here. But this is how I would get to course description. So your institution may have something similar. You may be working from a syllabus. If you're a course instructor, you of course probably have your own course syllabi uh, and uh, descriptions that are already available. Go with what you have and what's convenient to you. Uh, and if you are uh, a course instructor, you may be doing this a lot more deeply than if you're a, a librarian like me who is trying to do this to uh, basically give people an idea of what's possible. So I am going to be silent for a few minutes, but if you have questions, please put them in chat and I will take a look at chat in just a moment, but please also put some stuff into Padlet. So it looks like we got no question, people talking about weather.
Okay, so somebody asked in chat about registrars collecting syllabi. Some do that. Um, my uh, only concern with that in the past is sometimes they're slightly different for some courses and also um, they defer widely in terms of what they have. Um, it looks like a lot of people are going to the registrar. Somebody has access to Blackboard and can go into the courses and find stuff. That's cool. Um, so please feel free to keep adding to the Padlet. Um, the next step uh, in this is we are going to create search terms. So using the description or the syllabus or what other information you are to gather, start developing a list of search terms for the different concepts. So you might consider, um, and uh, the librarians should not be surprised that I'm going into this spiel. Think about synonyms and terms with similar roots because uh, when you're searching for these, people may call something many, many different things. So uh, be sure to think about synonyms and other search terms that you may want to use uh, when you're searching. So back to the worksheet, uh, and we had a few more people join. Uh, could you, uh, Heather, could you put the um, worksheet in again? Um, so uh, what you would do is to um, create a list of search terms. And I provided a few examples from a STATS uh, 5510 course. Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, design of surveys and questionnaires and sampling were some of the concepts used. So I tried to think about different variations on what somebody might call a survey, somebody might call it a questionnaire. Um, and then sampling design was another particular topic. Uh, we're not getting into search uh, phrases or statements yet. These are just lists of terms. And you may have multiple concepts. So a course may cover multiple concepts or it might just cover several central concepts from the description or from the syllabus. So I'm gonna give you a, uh, again, about five minutes and we will uh, reconvene about uh, 219. Uh, and if you uh, have any questions, don't hesitate to put those in chat. Thank you.
Okay, so now we're going to go to step three and develop some searches. So uh, again, librarians are probably not going to be surprised that I'm saying this, but be sure to think about using uh, advanced features like uh, the truncation uh, stemming, which is usually putting a star at the end of a string of characters and Boolean operators, particularly and or, and, and or but maybe uh, in some cases you may need to use the not operator. Um, and back to the worksheet, uh, again, I did provide some examples. So uh, for example, in terms of a survey or questionnaire, I might format it like this when I'm searching uh, the library catalog or something else. And our next step is going to get into the search tools. Uh, for sampling design, I might put that in quotes if I'm looking for that exact phrasing, for example. Uh, so this is another five minute one. Um, don't hesitate to, again, put questions in chat uh, if you have those, but uh, for your syllabus or uh, your um, description, the concepts you have, try to put those terms into some sort of search string you would put into a search tool. And we will reconvene about 25 after. And while I am thinking about it, um, I did a big no-no for something called open con. I did not put a statement on this thing about what I consider to be rights. Please consider this to be CCBY, basically. If you want to use this in any way, don't hesitate to use it. I did not uh, put a usage rights on it, but please uh, consider this to be something you can use, adapt, repurpose, etc.
Okay, so now we're to step four. Um, so one of the things you will find is depending upon the nature of your course and what your purpose really is for this, uh, you're going to need to decide what formats and then what search tools are you going to use to find those formats. So back over to the worksheet, we're on step four right now. So uh, I've put in some common formats in my a uh, particular uh, scenario, I use just the library catalog to find books and videos. Um, I didn't go to the step of finding journal articles, news articles, other types of formats, because I just tried to focus on what I felt would be the uh, lowest hanging fruit, so to speak, and I just used the library catalog. But for example, if I were uh, looking for statistics 5510 and wanted to find some journal articles aligning with um, that particular class, I would probably go to Mass Signnet to find them. Uh, same for conference papers. If I wanted something else, I might want to go to uh, uh, Sage Research Methods to find examples and case studies. I might go to data.gov to find data sets that people could, could potentially use. Uh, so in this case, what you're going to do is say, what tools are you going to use and what formats do you want to find? Uh, and I would say just leave it blank if you say I really don't want to uh, find anything for that format. So if you're saying I only want to do uh, books and journal articles, just fill out those two areas. Again, another five minutes for that. And uh, in this case, I'm also hoping people can go back to the Padlet and share uh, some information about some search tools that you would probably use in your situation. Uh, so let's reconvene at. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to go back to the Padlet for a moment. Uh, so in terms of some search tools, people are mentioning uh, like the worldcat.org, library search box, databases, and I mentioned some OERs, and you can, of course, include OERs, even though my focus was on library resources, definitely include uh, OERs. Um, you have, uh, somebody put some search terms in here also. Let's see if we can scroll down and get some, uh, some news articles, uh, resources for uh, uh, social uh, media and society journal, um, research methods, videos, uh, so a lot of potential Jove uh, films on demand, so there are a lot of potential uh, uh, places you can go to search. Um, as I said, I stuck with the library catalog because uh, I was dealing with, it ended up being like over 400 courses, uh, so it was just easiest to try to use one tool in two formats. Okay, next up is you're going to limit yourself. And I say this very purposefully and please uh, uh, think about doing this. Um, consider your courses and the nature, uh, their nature and what's important in those types of fields potentially. Uh, more likely you're gonna to wanna to impose some limits, uh, especially with years and language. Uh, so in my case, I, I, I've dealt with pretty much just the sciences. So, um, with a little bit of social sciences for one of my departments. Um, so I heavily made use of your limits uh, for the items. Uh, so I didn't want to get something that was too terribly uh, dated. So for most of them, I either used a 2010 limit or a year 2000 limit, depending upon the course of so computer science. I was only trying to find uh, fairly recent items for math, I let it go a little bit further out, but I didn't want to give them a bunch of stuff that was like uh, 1982 and 1976. Even though we had some ebooks in those areas, I didn't want to give a ton of older stuff because that would look like we don't have anything new. So I really wanted to focus in on that. So going back to the worksheet, in the next step, you're going to be thinking about some of the, uh, the um, potential limits you may want to have. And I have some librarian notes here for those that are not um, uh, librarians that this is how a librarian may uh, interpret or think about things. So it might help you think about some of these answers. And some of them to pay careful attention to is just because the library has an ebook doesn't mean it's unlimited user. So be sure when you're looking at ebooks in the library catalog, if you can't determine whether or not it is unlimited user, uh, it, what, either in the catalog or by going to the actual item, be sure to talk to your, uh, your librarian uh, that works with your department or one of your, like your affordability slash OER librarian and say, hey, I'm confused about this because you don't want to assign a library ebook as a textbook for your course and then discover that it's only one user at a time. Uh, so you may also want to think about issues like language. You may want to also think about uh, issues of whether in some cases you may prefer to use some print um, materials or a physical copy of a DVD potentially in some cases uh, is the ability to deal with smaller sections. So a lot of uh, a lot of ebook vendors allow you to go directly to a specific book chapter or a video platform may allow you to do a set up an account and then create specific clips and uh, uh, segments so you don't have to tell students to go to a 50 minute video but only watch this point to this point you can create a clip if you set up an account and something like films on demand. So think about those issues when you're considering ways to uh, potentially limit yourself. Uh, to certain things. Uh, so in this particular section, um, you're going to, uh, oh, I jumped ahead slightly, I believe. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, so think about these issues, and these are the types of things you may uh, consider uh, limiting yourself to when looking at these items. But I highly encourage you definitely to think about year limits and language limits, uh, because you're going to find a lot of stuff in other languages. And maybe you're, if you're just teaching a, um, a psychology course, you're not necessarily going to want to pull in a lot of non-English language things. But if you're teaching a, another language, make use of that language's issue, uh, language uh, limit option. 
Uh, I'm going to give you about, uh, uh, let's just do until uh, 2 uh, 38 for this one, because I think we're running a tiny bit behind. I saw a great comment in chat. Uh, one of the things you may definitely want to consider is content level, which isn't something that's always easy to limit by using the database features. So uh, some of that you're, you're going to have to do more manually uh, when you're looking at an item, examining it and saying, yeah, that's definitely not a uh, introductory level uh, particular item. Okay, so uh, the next step is we're going to do some searches and I had originally scheduled 10 minutes. We're probably going to have to just uh, come back after about five minutes. But what I am going to do is to uh, actually take you to uh, the library catalog and show you uh, a little bit more uh, about what I would have done. I put some examples for a statistics, that statistics course again but choose uh, the search tool of your choosing and just uh, write down a few items and i'm going to go back up and steal the search and kind of show you what i might have done uh in this case uh and again we're going to um just do five minutes so we're going to reconvene at uh 243 ish uh, to talk about this but i'm going to walk through uh as an example in the library catalog So one thing I would I had consistently did with this was going to the advanced search so that I can limit it to specific formats and specific years. So I might want to say I only want streaming videos and I only want stuff 2010 forward. Um, and uh, I could have said English. I don't think too many videos along those lines would actually be in another language, but just in case. And so there's 44 items, and in which case I would continue to go about looking at these particular items. And from my own personal experience, uh, having worked with this area before, I can readily see that a lot of these are probably going to be um, in uh, a database from O'Reilly, which has a lot of computer science stuff. So 
Um, some of these I might end up skipping over because they're very specific to a, a specific uh, platform type potentially. Uh, so I might end up looking for Sage uh, items. So this fourth one here would be one I might look at closer. And then I typically would save everything I thought was useful. And I tend to be pretty um, lazy. So what I would usually do is save these items into a list and then just use the uh, saved list from this item. And most of the uh, search tools that your uh, library has access to is probably gonna have a way to do some sort of saving, whether it's an EBSCO uh, platform, whether it's a library catalog, whether it's something like Scopus. Um, and then you can just copy and paste or send yourself an email or something with this particular list. So this would be a way I would go about very quickly having links to items. And, and to be frank, I actually just uh, did some editing and used the, uh, put this information directly into Excel and got rid of the junk basically. So I would just end up with titles. So that would be a very quick way to get something for a course uh, like this. And then I would re repeat something similar with focusing on ebooks, e for example. And that would be a way to do that. Okay, we'll give you everybody uh, about two more minutes to play with some searches. And please, again, put go to the Padlet and share some potential uh, course source items uh, that you may want to put in a course from this particular section. Okay, uh, as a reminder on Padlet, uh, you can share some potential course titles and links. Uh, and also, uh, we have a call for tips and there's a couple good tips over here about you can search a platform directly. Um, I think this applies both to ebooks and videos and that you might be able to get some deeper searching than you might be able to in a library catalog. Uh, you can find similar items. Uh, some databases have ways to do that. Um, and also, uh, librarians may be able to get to uh, something uh, that you may not be able to and to find out if we can get something, for example. Uh, so there may be not just what we uh, have, what we could potentially have. Um, and uh, for, for example, social media development, somebody said, hey, 2000 to the present. Okay, so what are the next steps? So these aren't done, um, of course, this is just a very short sna a sna a snapshot of what I did. And I gave you some examples just from one course. I did this for uh, many different courses and packaged this together. So what are your next steps, steps seven through 10? Um, I, uh, seven through 10, I'm gonna go back to our uh, uh, worksheet and it's going to go into some details about that. So in terms of the, uh, uh, this, you're gonna do this for all the other courses that you're wanting to work with if, you, uh, if you're working with multiple courses. Finding a way to make this information shareable if you want to share it with others. So uh, I started with Excel 
And then I, moved, I migrated to LibGuides and on our campus, our LibGuides are able to connect to our courses so that when students cl uh, click on a library link in a course, it will bring up a course guide that I assigned to it or another librarian assigned to a course. Uh, but it could also be a subject guide or something else, but I make course guides for all these courses I'm referring to. And that's how one way I've marketed it. And the marketing means uh, sharing this very strategically with people. So you can create an Excel spreadsheet and email it to an individual instructor. Or what I did in originally was I created an Excel a workbook that had all the uh, department's courses in it and shared with the entire department. Uh, you can put the content uh, in, in a course guide and then share the list of course guides with a, a department, for example. Um, you may want to, uh, for some certain courses, you may want to work with a tutoring unit. So math, statistics, chemistry, writing, those commonly have tutoring services on campus that would make use of something like this. Um, make it easy to find a way to connect to uh, the school's LMS if you can. Uh, so if your course guides can't connect to the LMS automatically, do a quick URL so it's not a really long URL that you can use to connect some information to a course potentially, or the instructor can easily import the information you're sharing. Uh, and if you're using books, definitely make sure to get examples of uh, um, publishers so people may respond better to say, hey, there's publishers such as Springer, Elsevier, Wiley, etc. Um, and then um, refresh it periodically, uh, especially if people are reusing uh, or, or using the content. So you want to occasionally, at least I try to do it about every summer to, uh, especially the higher use courses to, uh, on the guides to update those. So wrapping up, think about some of the issues that I've talked about today. Um, and if you can put some of the answers to these in chat, but what steps were hardest? What steps were easiest? Did you have any uh, trouble finding something? Uh, do you feel confident doing this for multiple uh, courses, potentially, if you're a librarian or for your own course, if you're an instructor? Uh, do you think uh, you could continue working with some sort of strategy like this? And uh, please share that in chat. And again, I'm sorry some of this at the end was rushed. I uh, thought the timing was going to work, uh, but it never seems to, does it? So uh, the end was uh, the last two steps are kind of a little bit more squished. Uh, so we have a, a few minutes for questions. Does anybody have any questions? And again, you can make use of the worksheet and continue uh, playing with the Padlet as well. Do we have questions? I'm not seeing any question oh wait uh can you share a link to your lib guide for yes. departments and joanna says she'd love to offer a workshop for faculty using this strategy yeah this is wonderful sharing this worksheet with us we really appreciate it danny you're welcome. And these are all of my guides. There's some that are subject guides or one off courses, but most of them are course guides I developed for this particular um, uh, scenario. Uh, I find that it varies um, as to whether somebody can replace something with a library material. Uh, sometimes uh, if it, it can work if they are willing to uh make some changes uh some people are very adamant that i really want to continue using this prentice hall book or i want to continue using the cengage book in which case we really can't help very much so they might need to consider another option like we have inclusive access options at ohio state so they could potentially use that which is more affordable but it's not free but if they're willing to adapt use an oer use course like library ebooks we can probably find a way for many classes, but often the lower level courses are less often to have a, a traditional textbook available via the library, but that's where OERs and other things come into play. Uh, I thought I saw one other question. Uh, uh, yes, I did not 
uh, do this because I got a request from instructors. I did it on my own volition in order to get um, interest. So when I send these reminders out, typically um, a few times a year, I usually end up getting a couple of questions about the stuff. Um, I believe some stuff is getting used without my being told. So I think people are just picking items that I have mentioned and they're getting used because I'm seeing some of the titles getting used uh, as text, but it could be coincidental, but it could be because people are using them. And I'm seeing the stuff that the tutors are mentioning getting used. So some of those uh, course guides are getting pretty heavily used. Um, in, more, in most cases, I would say don't hesitate to share. You're just sharing. You're not telling people to um, uh, overhaul their course. You're saying these are potentially useful resources for you. Yeah, it'd be great to know what people are using. We, yeah. yeah, we have a survey we're trying to get passed out and developed at CSU for that. Um, so we are at time for this session. I want to thank you all for attending and participating. And uh, we'll have our uh, keynote coming up at 3.30 with Anita Waltz, the Assistant Director for Open Education and Scholarly Communication Librarian at Virginia Tech. And so we hope to see you all there. Um, and we'll post the links to the Padlet and the worksheet is in there on Slack if you want to follow up uh, after this session. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you.